Hello and welcome to our series on three dimension geometry. In our previous lessons we talked about line in space. Today we will discuss equations of plane. Plane as the literal meaning of the word goes suggests something which is smooth and that is how we define plane in more technical language as well. We say that a plane is nothing but a flat surface on which a straight line joining any two points on it would wholly lie. And we are looking at finding the equations of the plane which will be uniquely determined if any one of the following is known. The first one is if I know the normal to the plane and its distance from the origin. Now, normal to the plane is nothing but a direction in our language a vector which is perpendicular to the plane. So, if I know the normal and I know the distance of the origin from the plane, then we are looking at a possibility of finding the equation of the plane. The other possibility would be if I know a point on the plane and the normal to the plane. Third possibility would be if I know three non-collinear points through which the plane passes. Now, each of these would give rise to the equation of the plane that we are getting ready to learn. Starting off with the first one, equation of plane in normal form. When we are given the perpendicular distance of origin from plane, say the distance d and we are given a normal vector. So, we know the vector which is perpendicular to the plane. So, if I take O n to be the perpendicular from origin to the plane, then the distance O n is small d and the vector O n is in the same direction as the vector n that is given to us. Therefore, vector O n will be d times the unit vector along the direction of the vector n. If I take p to be any point on this plane with position vector vector r, then I know that the vector o n which is perpendicular to the plane will also be perpendicular to the vector n p that is contained in the plane. And therefore, the dot product condition that is the dot product of these two vectors equal to 0 must be satisfied. So, you do get d n cap dot r vector minus d n cap equal to 0. As we simplify this, I get r dot n cap equal to d and this is what is known as the vector equation of plane in normal form. Also, as I rewrite this using the vector r as x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap and n cap as l i cap plus m j cap plus n k cap, where l m n are direction cosines of vector n cap. n cap remember is a unit vector. This gets rewritten as l x plus m y plus n z equal to d. So, that becomes the Cartesian equation of plane in normal form. Now, what we have to note here is that if the two equations that is r dot n cap equal to d had an unit vector and in place of a unit vector, I have say a vector n known to us and we have an equation given as r dot vector n equal to d, then the Cartesian equation of the plane would translate as a x plus b y plus c z equal to d. Then a, b, c that is the coefficients of x, y, z are the direction ratios of the normal to the plane. Another possibility is if I know the point through which it the plane passes and I know a vector which is perpendicular to the plane. The normal form depends on knowing the distance of origin from the plane. 
which is not always available. So, this form that is where I have a point given and a normal is going to be most frequently used form. So, how does it affect the equation of the plane? Starting with if I look at the figure, then I know the position vector of the point A, say the vector A with coordinates x1, y1, z1 known. I know the normal to the plane. So, vector n in this case symbolically represented here as you know touching the plane is not necessarily to be there. It is just a direction which is perpendicular to the plane that is known to us. So, that vector n has direction ratios as a, b and c. If I take p to be any point on this plane whose locus has to be formed, then we know that the vector a p is perpendicular to the normal that is the vector n. So, the dot product of vector a p and vector n must be 0. So, vector r minus vector a dot vector n must be equal to 0 and that gives rise to what is known as the vector equation of the plane. You may simplify this further and write as vector r dot vector n equal to vector a dot n, but it is perfectly fine to look at it like this as well. Rewriting this in Cartesians, it will turn out to be same as a times x minus x 1 plus b times y minus y 1 plus c times z minus z 1 equal to 0. And therefore, that becomes the Cartesian equation of plane passing through the point x 1, y 1, z 1 having normal with direction ratios a, b and c. If we revisit the two things that we have discussed so far, vector form of equation of the plane is given as vector r dot vector n equal to d. Now, vector n is a normal to the plane and d is that quantity that would simplify if you find vector a dot vector n. In Cartesian, after simplification, the equation of the plane in general will always simplify down to a linear equation in x, y and z in the form a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0. I have chosen capital D with an understanding of taking it a little different from the d earlier. Otherwise, any constants a, b, c and d as in that sense will be the required and a, b, c that is the coefficients of x, y and z will define the direction ratios of the normal to the plane. I think we are now ready to look at the third possibility. What if I have three points, non-collinear points through which the plane is passing? Instead of giving you a general formula for that, let us just take a question where you have to form equation of the plane which is passing through three non-collinear points. And let us see what the method is and what kind of a equation I get at the end of it. The problem here states that find the vector and Cartesian equation of the plane passing through the points A with coordinates 1, negative 2, 5 b 0 negative 5 negative 1, c negative 3 5 and 0. Now, if we try to make a picture as shown here, things will become easier to follow. If you take three points on the plane say as marked here a, b and c, then we know since by the definition and the characteristic of the plane, the vector a, b and the vector a, c will completely lie on this plane. And so, the direction which is the normal which is much required to find equation of the plane, the direction of the normal will always be perpendicular to the vector a b and the vector a c both. That is what will work as a key result and a concept. Let us begin with taking that vector n to be parallel to the cross product of vector a, b and vector a, c. Since vector algebra taught you that cross product of any two vector is always parallel to the given two vectors. 
and therefore, if I find the vector a b as position vector of point b minus position vector of point a, find position vector of c minus position vector of a to get vector a c, then find the cross product using determinant, I get the vector a b cross vector a c to be 57 times i cap plus 19 j cap minus 19 k cap. So, normal is any direction which is perpendicular to the plane containing these three points and therefore, normal will be same as the vector a b cross a c. We did see that equation of a plane through a point is given as vector r minus vector a dot n. Now, vector n gets replaced with a b cross a c. So, we have everything ready to form equation of the plane and that simplifies to be same as vector r dot 57 i plus 19 j minus 19 k cap equal to negative 76 simplification of vector a and the vector n which is along a b cross a c dot product. And therefore, simplification gives us the final answer as vector r dot 3 i plus j cap minus k cap equal to negative 4 as the required equation. To rewrite this in the Cartesian form, all you have to do is replace vector r with x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap and the dot product will give me 3 x plus y minus z equal to negative 4, which I can rewrite and simplify as 3 x plus y minus z plus 4 equal to 0 and that is the required Cartesian equation of the plane. So, the three forms that we discussed today, one starting with the normal form, where we need the distance of origin from the plane, another form where we had a point known and direction which is normal to the plane, third case where we had three points known, non-collinear points. Now, suppose these three non-collinear points were special points, special as in terms of they are nothing but coming out as points where the plane touches the three axis. That is what comes out as the intercept form of the equation of plane. Let us take a look at how and what special form does it result in. Here we have a plane making intercepts a, b and c units on x, y and z axis respectively. So, the plane must meet the three axis at the point a 0 0, 0 b 0 and 0 0 c respectively. Now, in this case again you can use the same procedure as in our previous question because these are three non-collinear points. But just to get that special form, if I take Cartesian equation of plane as a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0, then I know that a comma 0 comma 0 lies on this plane. So, if I replace x y z with these coordinates, I get a condition which tells me that capital A is equal to negative d upon small a. Similarly, you get capital B as negative d upon small b and capital C as negative d upon small c. If I use these values of a, b and c in the assumption of the equation of plane as a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0 and I just rearrange the coefficients, I will get a special equation in the form x by a plus y by b plus z by c equal to 1, which is known as the equation of plane in the intercept form. Equation which is very similar to intercept form of line in two dimension, but here we have a z by c added in. So, it becomes a linear equation in x, y and z represents a plane. This is a special form which is to be used only if you know something about the intercepts. Otherwise, we depend on the point and the normal form. Today's lesson focused on equation of plane 
in vector and Cartesian form and we covered several forms, but there is still a whole lot to learn which will be covered in our future lessons. I hope you will be there to watch them. All the best till then. Thank you.